All right, hello, I am Gary Simon of designcourse.com and today is January 30th with our 31st video of the year. And we are going to continue on with our iPhone breathalyzer website design in the HTML and CSS process. So today we're gonna to get finished with actually doing the HTML and CSS, but we still are going to have one more day tomorrow where we get the menu working and also do some other finishing touches. So. As always, check out designcourse.com and subscribe here on YouTube and the social channels which are available in the description. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this is where we left off uh, from yesterday. We have this text right here. So we're going to continue on working by adding the HTML for the resulting or the uh, text afterwards, and then we'll go ahead and style it in CSS. So let's go ahead and get up our editor here. All right, so inside of here, I, if we switch back to our, our Photoshop, we need to add this text. So this is basically going to be in a P tag, paragraph tag for HTML. And we'll go open it up by P and paste that in and then close it. Oops. Now we're going to want to be able to control the look and feel uh, of this text and, and certainly the margin as well. So we're going to give it a uh, class of subtext all right so we'll save that and then underneath we have our button our call to action so right here is order your Baxter now real quickly I'll just get that text and copy it and this will just be a single link in href so href equals we're not pointing it anywhere so we'll use that um, we also want to give it a class of CTA dash btn as in button and remember you can name these classes or these IDs anything you want so it doesn't have to be specific to what I'm using uh, and so let's go ahead and yeah, paste that in and then close that so if we save that and then we go ahead and look at what that looks like we'll see we have some ugly text here so now we have to go in and first we'll change the font and the colors and then we'll work with the actual uh, margins and such all right so um, we have the h1 here this is white or black currently so we need to change that and then make this as well uh, white text so what we can do instead of trying to make these white or whatever it was is we have an ID here of top one we can just make that white so let's get our CSS out here and custom and we already have it open here, so we can just put in color. All right, and save that. All right, now it's white. All right, and now what we want to do is change the font. And because most of our text is based, with, with exception to the links at the top and the navigation, since they're going to be uh, the Source Sans Pro, um, that we used. Let me see if we have that up here. Yeah, we have it right here. We're going to reference the body tag, which is inclusive of everything inside of it, basically. So I'm just going to come to the top here and just put in body. And we're going to put font family source sans pro. Save that. And then bring our thing back here. There it is. Okay, so this is thicker than we want it because uh, if you. Recall we're using this, uh, a thinner weight, so all we have to do is come back into our where's that editor, our CSS. I have too many of these windows open. I'm trying to find the right one. <laughs> okay, I can just minimize that. Okay, um, we'll go to. I'm just gonna go to the bottom here. H1 font dash weight 300, and remember that's the one that we uh, chose right here. All right, so we'll go back, we'll refresh this, and there we go. We're also going to want to change the size of this. So let's go back here and change. We'll put font dash size 2.5 EM. 
All right, so that's a better size. And let's see here. We want to work with the subtext right here a little bit. So I'll just type in subtext. And we want to do make it a little bit larger. So font size, by default, it's 1. So we're going to make it 1.2 EM. And then we also want to adjust the margin. It was too close to the title and that the link. So I'm just going to put in margin here. for the, We're going to specify the top value as being 12 pixels. The right value is 0. The bottom value will be a little bit more and 0 like that. So let's save that and see what this looks like. All right, so things are spaced out a little bit better. Um, let's work with the link now and make that actually look like this. So let's get the color here. And it's FF9600. We'll copy that. And the class was CTA-BTN. All right, so this is going to have quite a few properties just to get this working correctly. All right, so the first thing we want to do is make sure the, um, the link color is white. So color, all right. We don't want text decoration on it, as in we don't want the underline. So we want to do te text de ah, decoration none. We want the background color to be that. Just paste that in. And we also want a border radius. I think we had a, a corner radius right here. I think it was three or four. That nah, doesn't really matter. We'll just say four. So border dash radius four px, and then also Mo's has a Mozilla border radius four pixels. Let's just save this and we'll see what it looks like. It's not going to be correct yet, but we're getting there as you can see. So let's continue on. We want to add some padding because uh, padding between the text and the actual button. So padding. We'll do 10 pixels, and you'll see it's not going to look correct 100%. Uh, we want it to be a little bit wider on the sides. So to control that, we just put in a different value. This is top bottom. This is left right. So we'll save that, and it will look a little bit better. All right, and then let's uh, make the font size bigger, 1.4. Let's uh, also do, uh, let's see here, text align center. And we're going to hit display block and then width 50%. So watch what happens now. All right, so now the width of this containing element of this background is going to be 50% of whatever the, the parent element is. So we take this down. It's still only 50% and it's not in the middle. So we're going to make some adjustments for that. And that will come in with the media queries. Now I also want to add some uh, margin. This is too close between here and here. And so let's see here. We had no margin already. So let's just try 20 pixels just to experiment. Yeah, that didn't really make it a, a much of a difference. Let's try 40. All right, that looks a little bit better. And also, I, if you notice here, I, there's not an even distance currently between this portion and this portion. So I think everything, both of these blocks and right here, are going to need to be pushed down probably another good, I don't know, 40 pixels. So... I'm going to go back and work with that a little bit. So we need to find which one that was. So I believe it was, where's the phone at? Yeah, I think it was a phone dash top that we had that margin on. So if we go find that, it has margin top 110. Let's just try like 150. And save that and see if it gets pushed down a little bit more evenly. All right, that's a lot better in my opinion. There we go. And then we'll push this down as well. And if you ever, you know, if you're working with you know, your HTML files kind of getting large and you kind of forget, you know, what the 
the uh, the IDs or the class names are that you're trying to work with. You can just hit, you know, in Chrome, it's Control-Shift-I, and I believe as well in uh, Firefox. And with Chrome, you, if you just take this little, you click this little magnifying glass, and you come in and you click on, like, a, an element that's around where you want to find. It shows you right here, and it shows automatically when you click on it, you'll see this, this orange portion at the top, like, up here. Well, that's your margin right there. So that's what we want to find um, to be able to adjust. And if I bring this over here, let me s just bring the width in here. You'll see it shows all of the uh, CSS of whatever is currently selected. So we'll see it's top one, the ID of top one with margin 200 pixels. And another quick thing is if you just want to experiment on the fly and have it re uh, show you in the browser, you can change these uh, basically the uh, the values and it will update in real time so I put I changed it from 200 to 240 and already that's looking pretty good so I think that's what I'm going to use and it, now this this doesn't save it it just gives you a live preview so if we refresh it of course it's going to go back up so we just have to find the tag here top one 200 change that to 40 and then we'll go ahead and refresh. Okay. All right. So, so far so good. Um, we could see a couple things happen here when we start getting this thing in. I'm going to hit Control Shift I again and just move this off screen so that we can see the pixel value right here when we scale this. So, right off the bat, the reason this is going to the second line is because there's no more width uh, in that element. So. That's fine. Uh, there's several ways we can approach this. We can try to scale it down, uh, bring down the font size a little bit, or this actually doesn't look too bad, but I think there's too much height, a line height in between this, uh, you know, the, the H1 tag. So what we'll do is, I think what we'll do, and it will make more sense, is go ahead and just bring in the line height a little bit with CSS. So let's go ahead and do that. That is... H on hey, okay right there. Now I I didn't do this like when I did the test one uh, the project before this. I usually just run through everything. So we're gonna have to experiment just to kind of get an idea. So real quick, I'll just try line height. I'm gonna put it at like 25. I think that's gonna be way too. And you know what? I'm just off the bat. I'm gonna try 30. And then usually a lot of this just you know just kind of experimenting. So. When you change the line height, it will kind of bring everything up, even if it's on a, a, uh, one line. So that's a little bit too close. So we'll just change this real quickly to like 36. And that looks a little bit better. All right. And then we have kind of like an issue here where this is coming down because we have, remember, 50% of whatever the containing element is. So we can come in here, let's see. Yeah, at, um, we'll use the media query to adjust that. So let's find the CTA button is what it is. And I think uh, between th these two values right here, we'll put this in. And the only thing we'll change is the width by default was uh, 50%. So now we're gonna change it to, let's try 80%. So let's bring that back up and refresh it. Now it's it works better there. And then when we scale this all the way in, we see like a massive issue. <laughs> Everything's pushed down. So let's go ahead first before we get to this and work on this. Obviously, if you're viewing this on a tablet or a phone, this does not need to be this big. So we're, we'll go ahead and adjust the width and proportionally it will scale down based on the percentage we give it. And so let's go ahead and do that real quick. The idea of that phone was phone-top. And we're gonna come down here just to everything that's less than 767 and reference that and change this to width 50%. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So now it has a, obviously, it's quite a bit smaller. All right. So let's bring up uh, this again real quick and see how we can bring all of this 
closer together. So if you control shift I and click on that little magnifying glass, and I'm using Chrome again to do this. Let's click uh, right in here. I'll bring this up real quick so we can see this. We could see all that orange, which is basically margin, uh, that is applied to this top one. And we can see the margin top is 240, which is what we set for the larger view. So what we want to do is take top one and take that margin down significantly for this portion right here. So let's put top one. Oh man, hands in the wrong area of the keyboard. All right, top one, margin, uh, dash top. I'm gonna put 20 pixels. And then also for the text that is inside of top one, we want it, everything to align in the center. So we'll add text align center. All right, so let's refresh this and see what happens. Now everything moved up significantly. So let's see here. I think it would also be worth it to cut down on the, the media query that's within 767 on this up there. So real quickly, control shift I, we'll find this and that is phone top and we see we have a margin top of 150. So it's take phone top, it's already there. So margin top, I don't know. I think we had 150 so we'll put in Let's try 100 just to see what that looks like. It's a lot better. All right, and then let's get back here and work with this thing. And we want this basically to go 100% across. So that, I don't think we had that down here. There's a CTA button right there. Let's paste it right here with 100. Or no, not 1,000. There you go. There we go. All right. So once we start, we're going to start working on everything kind of beneath this portion. And then we can, you know, once we understand what's beneath it and how much room there is beneath this portion, we can work with that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and look over here and see what we have going for these two portions right there. All right. So basically, if we get up our grid, we'll see that each one of these is six columns wide. So we're going to have to have two class, two div that are six columns. And then inside, we're going to have one that is two in four. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Sorry, I'm clicking on the wrong windows. All right, so uh, let's get out the HTML and look at we what we have going here. So basically, we want to get outside of right there and just start at the bottom. And so I'm going to type in div class equals container 12. OK. Come inside of it and div class equals column 6. Close that up. And then basically you know these column sixes they're going to be duplicates so we'll focus just on this one here all right so inside of that we're going to also have a column two and this will contain our image of the phone and then also div class equals column six no four sorry and then close this up and this is going this will contain the text and this will contain the image so the image let's bring this down is breathalyzer good for this first one so we'll type in img source equals images slash breathalyzer dash good dot png and we'll give it a class i'm just going to call it sd all right and then and the reason I'm, I gave that a class instead of an ID again is because this is going to be duplicated. And so there will be two instances, so you can't use an ID there. All right. And then let's put in a P tag. We'll go back here to Photoshop. Wait, that's not the one. It's down here. Control A, Control C, copy that. 
paste that in, hit P. Okay, let's see. All right, so now what I want to do is just save, and we'll see how messed up this looks because we haven't really adjusted anything in CSS. All right, so we can see that they're not floating left of each other, and the reason that is is because we have to add a couple classes that was that were built into the framework that we're using 1140 and so we need to get rid of the right and left margin that's on the columns here so basically right here after column two we put an alpha and then omega it gets, get, gets rid of basically left and right uh, margin so if we save that they now float left and right. All right. All right, now let's go ahead and give the container 12 an actual ID so we can control the margin basically between these elements. So let me go over here. ID equals, I'm just gonna call it MDC, like in mid content. Come up here just after or before the first media query. And we want to give that, let's see where we're quick, margin top. And I'm going to try like 230, 230 pixels from the element above it. Ah, that's too much. And again, you know, if you want to fine tune this or if, even if you want to make it specific to, which is always a good thing, you know, I believe the element that it's taking this from is from the bottom of this to there. So this would be the distance. So just edit, copy, merge. There's a quicker. I think there's a tool you can use, but I just do this. I, I've always done it for some reason like that. 202. So we take a. Uh, two oh two. Save it, and that is the actual distance consistent with our Photoshop document. And then of course, we're gonna to have to use a media query to come back and take that margin down. All right, so basically that is within the 767 media query. So let me just take this. There we go, and it's only going to have to be like 50, I think, or 40. Mm. Well, we'll see. Um, basically, yeah, we also want this centered, obviously. So let's uh, let's see where we have what we have going here. So we want this to be centered. And we want that to be centered as well. So we previously created a class called ALC, and we want that to add that onto this right here, I believe. For yeah. So alpha omega ALC. And we can also add it on to this as well. So let's save that and that's a lot better. And so we're gonna definitely want to drop down the uh, the font size here for 767 for the H1. So and that way when we do that it'll scale everything up. That way this isn't so close to the edge there. So let's go ahead and there um, I don't think we have each one inside here yet, so I believe the font size was two. It was two point five, right? Let me see. Yes, right here. We may have to adjust the line height as well. So I'm just going to copy everything, just kind of paste it in there, and bring this in. And that. Oops. All right. So let's go ahead and take that we don't need to adjust the font weight or anything let's try just two just to see what that looks like and 
This will probably have to be dropped down to, I don't know, 32. We'll try it. All right, so now we have like a better, more even. All right, that still looks pretty good. Except this does not. So we have to kind of figure out how we want to adjust this. Instead of making it a 100%, um, I think we're going to make it 90. So that's right there. All right, now that's better. Um, all right, so right here we have an issue. Because we dropped down the size of this, we have to increase that distance. And that was, where was that? I'm trying to remember here. Yeah, it was MDC, yeah. Okay, so margin top, let's try 70. Okay, let's try 100. All right, that's a bit better. And now, uh, let's go ahead. Yeah, that, that we don't want that to be left uh, centered on that portion. Kind of forgot about that. Um, where was that? Let's see. It was on MDC, I think. Yeah, it was on ALC, except it's being applied to everything at any type of screen width or device width. So what we can do is make it so that when we're up here um, we'll put it right after the first one if we put MDC as a big content ALC text align left and hope that works alright that's better and so now what we have to do is since it's it's still affecting that we have to Come down here. It was kind of redundant, actually. Um, text align center. There. Okay, so let us go ahead now. I think that will be it for that um, code right there. So if we just take this we want to copy this right here paste it and this is going to be breathalyzer dash bad save it alright so this is what it looks like which looks pretty decent uh, and then it comes in a little bit and it's too scrunched up I don't like that it's like too close um, let's look and see what happens though when it gets further in okay that's not too bad uh, let's see here so let's work on that this portion right here remember we gave it a class both of these so we can control them and that was right here so I want to make the width or the scale of that thing from 100% down to 80. Usually when I have just one property, you can just put it all in one line. All right, uh, let's see here. So that scales everything down just a bit. And that way when it's, it's brought in, now, of course, because we put 80% and it was not on a specific media query, of course, this is what happens. So we just come down here. Well, first, let's grab that. Come down here. Oh, sorry. What I meant to do was... See, because if you put 80, like 100%, 
it'll go to the, the absolute hundred percent of the parent. So what we want to do is just put width auto. So it'll be the width of the image itself. And we also want that centered. So to center an element uh, in, an, in and of itself, you can use margin zero auto. And that will auto adjust based on the width from left and right. So now that's centered. All right, so All right. All right, cool. Now let's continue on with the final section, which is down here. So we're going to need a container to make this gray. So that's the first thing we'll start out with. So let's go back here. We'll specify, uh, damn, there it is. OK, so we'll go at the bottom of everything, put in div id equals gray container close that up and inside of it we're going to do div class equals container 12 and then also add the alc align center class because if we go back over here you can see how everything is just basically aligned in the center this 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 the text the image and this as well all right so let's close that out all right, so then inside of that, we're going to have to put a class called div class equals row. And that is also defined in the 1140.css. And I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. And then inside of it, we're going to put, if we go back here, turn on our grid. Each one of these, if you remember, is four columns wide, just like that. So let's go ahead and close that out. So we're going to need div class equals column for alpha omega and leave it at that and then inside of it we'll have the image and the actual quote so for the image images and it was person.jpg and then we had Let me get rid of that. We'll go up 100%. You can see we have um, the name, and then we have whatever they said. And you can see that they are styled differently in that one is on its own separate line, and then also this is a gray color. I'll copy that real quick. So the way you work with this, and you could do it within a single paragraph tag, is like this. So we'll put P class equals We'll give it a class that we can control, so quotes. And the reason we're giving it a class is because it will appear three times. Uh, we can give it a span HTML tag. Now, span is uh, perfect for the usage of what we're about to. Let's see here. Carry a story. Span. And just to make this a little bit more readable, and then we can come down here. Oops, that was the wrong one. Let me uh, and then just type that right there. P. All right. So now um, let me go ahead and take this. Everything from here. and paste that three times. All right, so if we look at this, it's not gonna look good at all. Let me see here. So let us first go ahead and work on that gray container ID. All right, and right here all right so inside of it we're gonna give it the background oh my god background color which we don't know because I initially copied that at the wrong time so it's like seven nine seven nine seven nine 
All right, and then we also need to give it a, a lot of margin and padding. So margin from the top will be 70 pixels, or you just do this, 70 pixels, and then padding from the top and bottom, 80 pixels, zero. So if we save this and refresh this, oh, <laughs> ridiculous. I got the wrong, I got the text color instead of this, which is E5, E5, E5. All right, good. All right, so now we have to work on the text a little bit. So basically, if we want the, to control that name portion, it's going to be P, or, or it's going to be dot quotes space span. So what we can do is control that. So quotes span, and we want to make sure that nothing will float to the left or right of it. And the way you do that is just display block. And then font size, we'll make that a little bit bigger. And we're going to want to make sure it stays black because when we come down here, we're going to make the color the one that I initially tried to get. I think it's 797979 right there, yes. So that's when we're going to use it appropriately. That appropriately. And let's just save that. There we go. And I want to give this thing a little bit margin, you know, from the picture. So let's just put margin top 10 pixels. Now it pushes that down a little bit. All right. We're almost done. Well, not entirely, but with the actual CSS stuff for the most part. Uh, now we need to put the image. And the image will go just after the row. So that's right there. And we'll put image source equals images phone dash. I had a typo. I called it SID instead of side. And it's not a phone. I keep on doing that all throughout this. It's ridiculous. ID equals phone dash side. All right, so let's see what that looks like. And the reason we give it an ID is so we can push this stuff down. So we'll go to just beneath here. Margin dash top 50 pixels. Let's just experiment and see if that works. It should work pretty good. All right, and there we go. So let's see what this thing looks like when it scales down. Cool. All right. So, you know what? We are going to have one more day until we're done with this. And the reason being is because we need to make some some just finer adjustments. Um, we're going to make these kind of... Do we really have that issue again? <laughs> the links aren't working. Uh, one second. And that's because I kind of forgot to add a necessary kind of class. Um, the reason this is happening is because the absolute... Uh, this is kind of sitting on top of it, basically. So we need to bring forward this and kind of layer it on top so that we can actually click these things. They're all supposed to be links. So basically, we want to go and find, let's go here real quick, scroll up. And it's on, I believe, container 12. This is all of our header stuff. And I'll add an ID. ID equals zfix, as in Z index, it's called. It's like a. Um, CSS property. I'll just put it here at the bottom. Z dash index is, we'll just put it two, but it fault everything's kind of just on the same path. So 
now we can hover over. All right, cool. So getting back to where I was trying to say is we'll uh, we'll style the links a little bit so that there's hover effects and off obviously as well when we scale this down, we're gonna uh, probably use JavaScript. I haven't really figured out the way I want to approach it. I think it's probably a necessity we use JavaScript. Uh, and it's very lightweight, you know, it's not intense or anything, but basically you just have to capture the click and then reveal and show the uh, the menu again that was hidden um, and then make it so that when you click it again, it'll just kind of go back up. Um, all right, so that will probably, you know, that's definitely worthy of covering again uh, in a different tutorial because we're already at 40 minutes. And also, you know, s small stuff like this, you know, hover, change the color and stuff and yeah uh, i think that's it all right so as always visit designcourse.com subscribe here if you haven't yet and i will see you tomorrow